All right, kids, so CBR, we're continuing the whole thing about how they say comic book readers suck. This one is what, we're down to number three here, and when I read it, I was like, all right, I think I get a little bit of it, but overall, you know, you, you just gotta you just gotta watch to find out I scared twiddles. What you gonna do? Sit back, relax, let's get this party started. I know you are gonna dig this. Let's move on to number three, please. And that is uh, Stanley Warship. Okay, let I, I've got to read this one off. Uh, let's see. Stanley is more a controversial figure inside a comic fandom than he is in wider pop culture. MCU fans think of Lee as the creative genius behind Marvel's most fertile period. Uh, he comes across as everyone's kindly grandfather telling tall tales and working as Marvel's greatest cheerleader. However, comic fans know that Lee's legacy is much more complicated than that. Often, he essentially edited the comics. Uh, he was most closely associated with an artist like Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, John Romita, and Don Heck both drew an, uh, the books and wrote the dialogue. That hasn't stopped part of the fandom from continuing Lee's false narrative, painting him as the mastermind behind the Marvel Universe, the uncritically embraced Lee's vision of events, the biggest problem with this is that it denies uh, creative. Ma this, this is news, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, we look. You cannot say that Stanley. You can't understate what Stanley has provided. But there, we, a lot of us already do know that there are arguments that to be made that Jack Kirby did a lot of the writing that Stanley got, or a lot of the creating anyway. Stanley gets credit for Steve Ditko, uh, the family of Steve Ditko will not drop the Doctor Strange and Spider Man lawsuit, and it hasn't been dropped yet. But there have been um, there have been a lot of people come forward saying, you know, he would just say uh, the X Men go and battle this villain. We need a villain, and Jack Jack Kirby or whomever at the time would be uh, drawing would come back and they would have the villain all created and then he puts in the dialogue so would that not actually be a straight up jack kirby creation instead of a kirby lee creation and considering he's the last man standing he does get a lot of credit i i do agree that uh this is this is not us on this one this is the yeah, norm but, with, well, but without the dialogue would some of the characters be as good like uh think of the galactus trilogy mm-hmm Kirby just put in a guy with a silver surfboard. Lee was the one that gave him the personality, gave him, gave yeah. him the dialogue and everything. So you can't yeah. take one away without the other. Yeah, I think I think it's this is going too far the other way. It's the best way to look at it as you know co-creators. You know, again, it, you know, part of you know the long time thing was you know the Marvel way, where and what Stan did a lot of was in terms of writing the plot. And then he would leave it to Kirby or the artist to kind of, you know, come up with the art. And then he would come back in and, you know, fill, fill in the dialogue. I'll tell you, I think no one could have launched, definitely at the time, no one could have launched Doctor Strange except for Stan Lee. Stan Lee has a very uh, dramatic prose. And I think that truly did help out uh, Doctor Strange at the time. I would say um, this. What's up? I would say Stan Lee did what DC didn't. He went out and promoted everything. Oh, he was, he was he absolutely was, that. He, he was promoter. Now, he may not have created everything. He, like I said, he may have co-created stuff, but he was the showman. He was the salesman. He went out and he, he, said, he said, damn it, I love... He, he generally loved the characters. Whether he wrote them or not, he loved every single one of them. And he wanted, he loved the fans. And that's why a lot of fans identify with him. It wasn't like, it didn't see anybody even, who is, who's the Stanley at DC? But, okay, so. There is here, not of Marvel now. <laughs> here's the uh, comic book historian in me. And it's it's no secret. This is a big story anyway. Um, Stanley was going to quit. Marvel is a copycat house. Marvel put in zero effort. Yeah. Not li literally, but you get what I'm saying. And so Stanley was going to quit. Joan said, well, then, if you're going to quit, write the kind of comics you want before you leave. And he created the Fantastic Four. 
and it was a hit. So, uh, okay, do again, do it again, Stan. Okay, so uh, he goes out and he creates Spider-Man, Thor, X-Men, and uh, eventually the Avengers. The Incredible Hulk, of course, is in there. Uh, he, he had I think he was everything. second after, or well, third after Spider-Man. You could say he had his hands in everything. No, no, uh, no. You you have to say he had his hands yeah. and everything that because he did. Yeah. Without Stan Lee, there is no Marvel. Without Joan Lee, there is no Marvel. Yeah. Well, so, especially in, as you read the book, I mean, there's that one point in time where basically when superhero sales turned and Goodman was looking to switch gears, mm -hmm. Stan was the last employee standing. Yeah, he uh, was. They they cut the staff down so freaking far to the point where Stanley had to rehire Jack Kirby to get him on. Mm -hmm. They were, they did, they didn't have a lot of people working for, I, for Marvel at the time. I, I kind of compare, now this might be wrong. I compare him to Walt Disney. He had a vision. He wanted to do. That's actually not a bad comparison because Walt Disney was the idea man. It was Roy Disney who had to come up with the finances. Yeah. Uh, so Roy Di uh, Walt Disney never said, I want to. He always said, this is what we're doing next. And then it was up to Roy to go find the financiers, which after a time, it's like, hey, uh, Walt wants to do this. And people were like, here, take my money. I want a piece of the action. <laughs> Okay, so uh, here, 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 here's the thing: Stanley's history of how he basically created the from scraps. Uh, Marvel remind remind me of the editor of Dragon Ball Z, Hu Ho Haku Show, and Sailor Moon was the same guy, and Shueisha was almost bankrupt. He he was to quit. He was work in a bank, and he gave it a shot for five guys to make a Shawnee Jump history and end up being the biggest success in the history of uh, uh, of Shueisha. It, it's one of the sisters you, you, you know, you don't know what's going to happen, but doesn't quit so easily. <laughs> uh, once like do say, no matter, okay, no matter what happened during the years of Marvel's existence, if there was no Stanley, there was no Marvel comics. True, true, true. Uh, Dark Admiral, they just loved sh on Stan. I'm sure it's more complicated than any of us know. I'm sorry, but Stan was the face and voice of Marvel. It's his voice I hear narrating the books I'm reading and the Saturday morning cartoons yeah. uh, when I was a kid, for sure. Uh, Stan built Marvel, says Ash. Um, he definitely got the uh, foundation laid uh, on the back of Jack Kirby, says. Uh, and then Jack Kirby was the artist who happened to be there. No, sir. No, sir. He didn't just happen to be there. When it came time to have an artist for his book, Stan Lee requested Jack Kirby. At the time, Jack Kirby was drawing monster books and uh, Challengers of the Unknown. He requested Jack Kirby be the one to help create the Fantastic Four and thus the Marvel Universe. <coughs> this goes back to a conversation we had last week. Uh, they, Stan Lee co-created he created the, the idea of the character, but as far as the, the physical, what he looked like stuff, that was Kirby. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I think cool. the time too, he was, he was the last the last man standing and the victors get to write the history books. Exactly. Well, yeah. As a matter of fact, even um, he was the first artist to be asked to draw Spider-Man was Jack Kirby. He, he, he was not just there at the time. So obviously the whole Jack Kirby, Stan Lee controversy is something. I've got a documentary on I Love Comics, and I think I put it here too about Jack Kirby that my brother did while he was a part of the channel, and it's been pretty popular. And the most popular segment when we have it broke down is the one where we talk about the war between Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. I don't particular, as much as I like Jack Kirby and I, I do like Stan Lee, I really don't take sides i i do see a little bit of jack kirby's point but jack kirby was a bad businessman he could have worked his contract once you find out what bob kane was able to do with batman you got to think jack kirby was such a powerhouse in the comic book industry he could have put provisions into his contract and so i think he was a a great artist fantastic uh artist way ahead of his time but um 
he just didn't know enough that I don't think he realized who he was. Like, I obviously he knows he created these characters, but I don't know if he realized who he actually was. I think he was he he figured himself to be Jack Kirby, not Jack Kirby, even though the people around him may have seen him that way. Um, but you know, it's a controversy that's going to go on. This is something that. Uh, I think uh, people are just going to say, are you here, are you there? In all honesty, I like both. I like both together more than I do uh, them separate. And Jack Kirby went on to create some interesting things, but even the best of his was better when other people did it. All right, that's my controversial take. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to click like, share, subscribe. Ring the notification bell if you don't want to miss anything. Cool things happen around these parts. You shouldn't miss anything. If you don't mind helping out the channel in another way, I've got a Ko-Fi link in the description below. Drop even just a dollar in the tip jar. I'd like to thank everybody who has already done that. And to everyone, all of the t true believers, thank you very, very much for watching. Dig this.